Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you just have stepped into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. All right, all right, all right. What's up? What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. Yo, yo. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, let's let's let's. I, I know we left off where Al Ritz said y'all lost to them at Arizona, and you said y'all won at Arizona. So, okay, what's so the debate on that? The only thing I could think of. That, I all right, hold on. Let's wait for him to come in the room. Let's let let's. Cause I know you gonna have something to say when he come in the room. He in there. I see him. So what's going on with that, man? So I think I, 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 if I, if I recall, I thought we played them in the first round. Of the, I, uh, you kind of breaking up. You breaking up. You breaking up. To... Call me. Somebody try to call me. Sorry, but uh, I think what happened right, is I cool, think we ended cool. up playing University of Arizona first and lost because I do remember uh -huh. losing Arizona, and then we played them in the consolation game because I guess they all they lost to the other team. But uh, two and one. Yeah, sixty-six percent. But you know what, Alvin was. Uh, Alvin was a great competitor. You know. Uh, yeah. You know he's kind of, kind of like uh, Mike Thompson in essence, as far as shot the ball really well. Uh, you know, really, really good defensively. Know the game really, really well. And you know, all the guys I played with, great competitors. I mean, no quitting them. It's to the end. You know, it's to the end, but from from start to the minute that thing go up to the end. And, and, and what about uh, my guy Pat Alphonse? So Pat, Pat was just silky smooth. Pat was Pat, Pat can Pat can score the bucket, and then at the end of the game, he go, "Damn, Pat, how many you score tonight?" He ain't like you really did much, and boom, he had twenty two. Right, so right, right, Pat, right. So Pat really put on it, and then, you know, it was it was a different Pat playing with us. Than when he played at Grady, you know, Grady, right. you know, Grady, he's the man. So he just, you know, right. did his thing. And I never watched him play at Grady because while they played, we were playing. And I'm in the Bronx right. and he's in Brooklyn. But when we played in church, we both had roles that we played. And Pat played his role really, really well. And Pat really gave me a lot of confidence. Pat really gave me a lot of knowledge. Uh, we were always roommates um, on the road, me and him. And then it was me, him, and Mike Thompson. Uh, then me, him, and Mike Parker, but it was the down common denominator was Lloyd always put me and, and Pat together. And Pat was real street savvy, smart, Brooklyn cat. You know, he knew the ins and outs. You want to get to a party, Pat knew what to do to get you in. Pat is, you know, Pat is the socialite, definitely. Yeah. Def, Pat is I, a basketball socialite. I live in Florida, and if I want to go somewhere, I call Pat in California be like, yo, what's going on in Miami? And Pat like, yo, give me two minutes. I'm gonna let you know what's going on around your neighborhood, um, right? So, but you know, he, you know, he really, really, he never disrespect you. He always played no. hard, always, you know, uh, was a good teammate, and he can score the ball, man. You pack at that ball on the post, it's a wrap. He going to the free throw line or he getting a bucket, and if you talk smack to him, it could come back out. It, it, it could right. actually, then you see that one gold teeth start showing and glistering. <laughs> You know, you know what it is, but Pat was Pat was good. He came. Mr. Walking Bucket. Maryland. Nah, I was just calling Mr. Walking Bucket. You know, Walking that's that's bucket. just definitely. He had the broad shoulders, shoulders right. Look like, look like he had shoulder pads on, just straight across. Talk real low, talk real sick, and they always say, "Yo, my dude." When he sat out on the court, it's a wrap. You, right. You, you, you got problems, yo, my dude. <laughs> All right, so who was the best high school player you played against? Who was the best college player you played against? And what guy who was in the pros or made it to the pros that you played against? Just one uh, each. One each. So in high school, 
man, it was so many high school, but I guess I would probably have to go with Malik. Malik and Kenny, one and one A. Um, and the good thing was I was with those guys day in and day out. So I saw the work that they put in and the success they got out of it. So absolutely, Kenny and Malik, one and one A, obviously two different positions uh, for sure. Um, in college, I want to say my teammate Walt Williams, six nine point guard, the things that he did um, and the things that I continue to say, man, that shit was luck. That shit was luck. This shit went on for three years of uh, being lucky. You know, right, all right. To the number seven draft pick. Um, so that was, uh, that was, and yeah, it had to be Walt. You know, uh, Walt, Walt Williams. And then Christian Leighton uh, was really, really okay. good. And, you know, I was still never a believer. Even when he would bust my ass, I still wasn't a believer. And George, <laughs> George Lynch. George Lynch Who? problems. George uh, George Lynch. George Lynch, yeah. Played it on North Carolina. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Lynch. North Carolina. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I remember he was just. He had a long, he had a long pro career, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. He was an all-star. He, so he, I remember him giving me but my first game in North Carolina. I'm Thank playing. You, we get there. Everything is light blue. The court is light blue. Everybody in the stand got on light blue. I'm just like in the days. We end, we end up losing by like we were up by like 15 or 18 in the second in the you know early second half. Dean Smith gets up and points. This say work gets up and points. By the 10 minute mark, we were down six from up wow. 18. Uh, you know, I remember the next day, coach was talking about you know back then it was a videotape. Look at the tape. The tape don't lie. The tape don't lie. You're not fronting the right. post. That's right. That's right. You're not fronting the post. So, but I do got a funny story. So I'm at Honesdale, five star. Um, Alonzo Moore is number one player in the country. Malik City is number two, or vice versa. And we're at Honesdale, and you know you play outside. So right. it was raining. It was raining. And that day, Malik was supposed to play against Alonzo, and I was supposed to play against Christian Leighton. And at that point, I don't know who the hell Christian Leighton is. Right. Just a white dude from Buffalo. So they're like, yo, we're going to move at the guy named, his name was Alligator, the guy that ran, you know, gave the discipline and did all that shit. So he's like, yo, we're moving the game to the high school down the street. Uh, but the rule is no dunking. You can't say nothing. We go inside, they close the door. It's like, all right, y'all can dunk. Do whatever you want. It's on. So I'm lining up against Christian Leighton. We're next to each other. The ball about to go up. And I look at him, I go, yo. I'm about to bust your ass, white boy. That's that was just it. I'm about to, and he looked at me, go, man, whatever. Proceeds to give me like thirty. <laughs> right? I, I get like in the twenties, maybe low twenties. They win. Fast forward, I'm at Maryland. He's at Duke. We're playing at Maryland. I'm on the foul line, and sitting next to me is a guy named Kubiak. Um, yeah, for them. He he was uh, Listen, lined up next I, to me. Greg Kubiak. We played against him in high school when I was in Lincoln. Yeah, so right, and we stayed at uh, we 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 stayed at their houses just like the same way you guys when you traveled, y'all stayed at right. other people's houses. Right. Yeah. So I definitely so, remember Greg Kubiak and playing against him. Yeah. Me. I'm on the bottom or in the middle, and I go, "Yo, white boy, I'm about to bust your ass." <laughs> Christian he looked over at me and go. There you go with that shit, Garfield. There you go with that shit. <laughs> so, yeah. You already know, because you, you, you were thinking the same thing at, at, at Five Star. <laughs> Man, I'm just glad he didn't give me 30. That, that, that's all so, I'm afraid. Who, who was the guy who asked you bust in college that let you know you arrived? Um, You know what? I I think I gave everybody the business. You know what I mean? I just, this, this was, like my junior year, like if you was in front of me, you got it. Like you were going to get it. And I'm not saying I went out and dropped 20 some points every game. I think my junior year, I was about 14 a game, 13 a game. But, you know, like my, you know, Walt was the leading scorer and that was my first year and I was the second leading scorer. Uh, you know, it's, we just played. Um, yeah, but is it is it one remember. game? Is it one game that stuck yeah, out that you I gave somebody the business twenty and twenty? Maybe two. So one game we're playing Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech, and mm -hmm. by this point I was playing in and out, and they had Andy Geiger checking me. Or Matt Geiger, Matt Geiger, Andy Geiger played the Sixers for a long time. He's by yes, Matt Geiger, Matt Geiger, yeah, Matt, Matt Geiger. Geiger. So he comes out, <laughs> and everything is clear out. Bring him out. 
I ended up that game with 22. And, you know, but I've scored 18 to 20 before. I think I dropped 26 against USC, my fourth, my sixth game in the season. So that was one. Then we played Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech. At this point, Walt Williams had broke his foot and he was out. Now I'm the man. And I think I gave them 36. Mm. So we, you know, I, your boy was putting up some buckets um, during that time. But, you know, the, the, the good thing about the ACC was every night, was a night. You know, there was no off nights. If you were off right, that night, right, you right. ass busted. That's right. So, you know, if you if you drop 12 or 15 in the ACC, that's count for 25 to 30 somewhere. So, so you know, somewhere else because every night was a different night. ECAC Challenge where we played the Big East. I mean, Big East versus ACC. We played Boston College. Smacked them up. So, I mean, you know, we, we, we had a good team for what we were doing. So, you... You were able to get your academics together. How did you find your, your place in the academic world? Because you said you really wasn't too much into school early on. So academically, I, you know, I was still trying to figure myself out. You know what I mean? Like, I still, you know, my whole, by this point, my whole focus was strictly basketball. Like, I want to go pro, going to make some money, I'm going to do my thing. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I went to class. I was eligible. I was never ineligible. Uh, coaches stayed on me. Um, you know, I still did. I, I, I left Maryland and didn't graduate. I ended up didn't graduate. I didn't, I didn't get my degree till probably about 12 years ago. I think I went back and got my degree just 2008 or so. I went back and started to go back and just say, you know, this was something I fit. And the funny thing was I was within like a semester of graduating, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 21. Like I wasn't even thinking about, you know, like later on in life degrees, you know, things of that nature. And the funny thing was I broke my leg my senior year playing against um, FSU. Uh, Charlie Ward. Yes. Sam Cassell, Bobby Sora, uh, Doug Edwards, um, a guy named uh, Mike Irvin from down in, in this side. And, you know, one of my teammates ran into me and I ended up uh, fracturing my knee, uh, kneecap. So, you know, my season ended like in February at that point. And, you know, I was so mentally depressed about not playing ball, you know, all these projections of things that might might could have happened for me success-wise, you know, you know, professionally was like, you know, down the two. I had to, you know, rehab. I couldn't get surgery because of where it was cracked. So I just had to, like, just wear a sleeve for probably about two months. So, you know, I, I, I really, like, messed myself up from that February till – Probably I didn't really start becoming getting better basketball wise just coming off an injury to probably mid summer. So when you came back and got your degree, uh, did you pay for it or the school looked out and paid for it? No, well, so I could have. So by this point, when I went back, decided to go back to school, I was already living in Florida. Um, so I had two options. I could have went back to Maryland, and Maryland would have honored because they have a fund for athletes to go back to school um if they want to but you would have to live you would have to live in maryland so you know you you know your last semester you have to do on campus and i have to live in maryland at this point you know i have a daughter that was at, the, at that point probably it was about nine or ten and you know that's the best job i ever have and i would never i just couldn't see myself leaving my child for six to eight months you know i just i mean it would have been a great sacrifice but i still couldn't do it so i ended up going to college down here I got my degree from down here, but, you know, I still get a lot of love from Maryland. You know, I still wear my Maryland gear every day. Um, you know, they still take good care of me. Um, I got honored a few years back. I went back up there and got honored probably about four years ago. Um, you know, so I don't regret any of my decisions in regards to choosing Maryland. I have some, you know, the regrets in regards to being more focused, being more serious, uh, things of that nature, which would probably give me four years at Maryland instead of just two. That's probably my right. Thing. Really? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You could have played another year after your senior year. No, meaning if I did what I was supposed to do in high school. Oh yeah, school, okay, I okay, I got school. you. Yeah, I yes, went there yeah. Four years instead of having to go JUCO for two. You know, because my my experience there was so much bigger. I mean, it was great basketball wise. Like I have probably thirteen teammates, and I still talk to. We talk every day. We have a group chat that we talk every single day. Uh, one of them had the COVID virus, so now we work out every day and send a picture in the group chat. So I gained a brotherhood from from college, 
from high school that, you know, I still talk to this day, and I'm 50. That's dope, man. That's yeah. dope. Basketball is just, just taking me to places I never would have gone, uh, made me money I would never would have made, uh, met people I never would have met, um, and all this just came from some guy that walked by the park one day and was like, yo, you play ball? Come meet me at the train station tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Who's the name of that guy? You remember him? Dave. Dave, Dave, uh, Dave Jones from Galveston. Okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you. Yeah, got you, got you. Yeah, Dave Jones. And, you know, still to this day, I saw, I finally hooked up with him probably after, because I haven't seen him decades. Um, I mean, I literally I have not seen him since high school. And I hooked up with him through Facebook, and I just sent him a long post. Hey, you know, I really appreciate everything you've done, and that, that, these are things because of what you initially did. And obviously, I sent him, you know, I did, I sent him a little care package with some gear, gear and stuff like that. So, okay, I'm thankful. So, are, are you are you doing anything with uh, kids now? Because when I saw you doing an interview, uh, you had a team with you. So I coach. So basketball has brought me. So I'm full circle now. So now I coach. I coach at a high school. I work at a high school as an administrator, and I also an assistant coach. Um, I'm not into coaching like a coach coach, meaning, you know, like right, I don't right. wake up every day talking about, oh, I got to get on the court and, and coach these kids. But I'm more of, the, you know, the guy that, like, listen, man, you need to really work on this because these are the pitfalls that really cause That's right. That's work. right. You know, you don't want to do that and these things are there. And that's why now when kids, like, talk about transferring and things of that nature, like, I'm not mad at that. Like, those things don't bother me because, look, I transferred. So what kind of hypocrite would I be to tell somebody else, That's right. Yo, don't transfer? What's for me is not for you. You understand what I mean? And who's to say that that next choice may not be the right, may be the right choice for you. It may not, but it's your life. You know, why not figure it out, Why, especially while you're young? So I, I, I have another question, too. How do you think Riverside compared from when you played to now? You know what? I, I really don't – I really have no clue what's going on with Riverside right now, meaning not good or bad, just saying, like, I'm not in the know. You're not, you know, in, the, you're not in the fraternity to, to, to know yeah, what's going I, on. Like right. they, you know, I, I mean, I know a few years back, you know, they were doing some stuff, but I haven't heard much um, in regards to that. Um, same thing with Gauchos. You know, I mean, I know they have the gym. Um, I know they're still doing things. Um, I don't think necessarily that – it's maybe as strong as it was back then, um, right? In regards to people, I think that the, the whole AAU, the whole basketball realm, has changed. Um, like I said, the Kenny Smith brother, Vincent Smith, Pierre Turner, Julius Allen from the Boys Club, and uh, up in Fordham Road in the Bronx. Um, I mean, there's like countless of people who worked with me that never got paid, probably never even got thanked. Because back then, you know, we weren't thinking about thanking the people every day after training us that worked out with us and trained us and things of that nature. And that was a business. You know, right. every, every AAU is trying to get that one kid who could take him to get to college. You know, That's who, right. can ride, who can ride a kid out and see, where, you know, where we, where we can go with them. Or, you know, oh, yeah, we want you in the team, but it's a $450 fee. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, like I never paid a dime to play basketball ever. Not me either. Me Ever. either. I mean, me I was. Either. I remember I playing and when I played at St. Teresa's in, in, in Queens. You know, the Catholic League, CYO. They were giving me, you know, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Adidas. You know, to play. You know, things of that nature. And you know, it just it, the game has changed. You know, it's now it's more of a business than anything else. You know, Ernie Lloyd, uh, Mike, his son, um, Al, Al Alford used to coach at Gauchos, and also. Yep. Uh, her Dermot player, you know, like all those guys just love the Alex Evans, like all those guys just love the coach, love to play, love to be around us, love to get us better, love to compete. You know, now it's, you know, everything's an ego, like, yo, that kid can't come play for me. Or, hey, yeah, he's not, you know, if a kid leaves your program, then you, you know, you tarnish his name because he ain't playing with you no more. You know, it's never about, it's never, to me anyway, it's never about the kids. You know, right. And, and I'm sure there are some really, really good AAU guys that do a lot of stuff. I don't know Tiny Morton, but I just, I know that he's, you know, I, I follow his story quite a bit, and I think that I know he does a good job. Um, Jefferson coach, uh, Bud pa uh, Pollard. Yes, uh, yes, definitely. He played at West Virginia, played with us at, at Mar I mean, at uh, Riverside Church. 
I know he does some good things. I know there's some good coaches out there, but there's so many people that messes up the water that it puts a stain on a lot of, you know, a lot of things. Yeah, I think now that the coaches who are players early on have the power, I don't think they're working together as much. I think everyone is working for their own benefit, which you should, which you should. But well, we got to move the coach along, and if we work together, uh, it'll benefit the kids. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the you reality know? is there, there is a monetary value to some of these kids, and I get it. You know, I mean, you know, you got a college coach coming to you, offering you 50 grand to help a kid steer a kid to that. I get it. Uh, but at the same point, like, your moral compass got to be forefront in everything that you do. And can you look at yourself in the mirror after you make a decision that you make to say, hey, did I do what's best for me or did I do what's best for that kid? Because if you take money for a kid, which I'm not saying good or bad, but then, that right, kid, right. Then, then, but that kid goes into a situation that's not conducive or helpful to him, then now this kid is going to be looked at as someone bad when he decides to transfer. Well, the reality is he should have never went there in the first place. Right. You understand what I mean? And then everyone gets on the kid. Well, he, you know, where, where's the people that, that was around him that just said, like, yeah, that's probably not a good mix for you, a good fit. Look at Jonathan Duck. Jonathan Duck was highly recruited. He decided to go to Iona. Yes. Stay close to home because he knew, like, okay, I could have went to a bigger school, but the reality is I'm 6'7", 260. You know, I'm not going to be able to post up a lot of 6'8", six, 6'9", six, people. And right. Go to Iona and I could go dominate. People get yeah. close to the name. Yeah. Uh, my boy, Devon Jones, who also went to Maryland, uh, salute D, and he has a company called 496 Sports where they make uh, uniforms. Oh, okay. Yeah, he said, who do you think produced the best players, New York City or DMV? Uh, depends. Now, if we're talking back when I played, I would say us for sure, for sure. And I still say us for sure. But I think D.C., um, they've got some really, really good talent in the 2000s. Like that really, really yeah, I think they're producing. I think they're producing better pros. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think and you know, college I think players. Yeah. Really, and I, and you know what? I think it comes from some of those those AU programs that they had in there, and also the Catholic school program there is really really good. Hey, when we played the CHS, the CSSAAA was no joke. You know, every Catholic school was 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 uh, like playing in the ACC. Do you understand <laughs> what I mean? But. When I went to so when I went up to Maryland, I played in the the pro am league. Yeah, I got like Mucci Norris who played. You know, right, right, bro. right. You had Kurt Smith who was Charles Smith's brother. You know, Keith, Keith Booth. He was bad. He was bad. Yeah, I heard about him. Yeah, Keith Booth, Dante Bright. Like I mean, you know, them them cats they could play. It's a different. What game. about now? What about now? Uh, I I I have so be, let's be fair. I live in Florida. I've been here since 96. Um, I don't know all the players from each, but I do know people in each. And I would say, probably to be honest, D.C. DC got some talent there. D.C. got some boys there, and they're working. They're, they're working. And, you know, I'm sure New York has some talent too. But I think the problem is with New York is there's a lot of, from what I'm hearing, there's a lot of infighting. You know, it's a lot of, People grappling yes. back and forth. Yes. The same place. Yes. A lot of crabs uh, in the barrel syndrome. Crabs in the barrel, uh, you know, up and down. And those things never manifest anything. But the reality is if no. we develop more players and develop more kids, we will have a lot the pool will be a lot bigger. The pool will be a well, lot we, bigger. Well we we have uh, a coach coming on uh Wednesday. Well we have one tomorrow, uh and Jason Gilliam, right oh, from yeah, FMU. Yeah, Jason lives down by me now. Right, right. He's so, Boogie now. Jason Boogie now. To uh, a Malloy boy, Malloy boy. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then we got a, a New York City coach, uh, Will Jackson. He coached Banneker. Uh, these guys are very tough. And they're not in the double-A. They're in the A division. But they beat a, a couple of A division teams, double-A teams. They beat uh, Jefferson. They beat Boys and Girls. And they're on the rise. And this guy is doing very well by his players as well as other coaches out there. But you, he's Jason, gonna be on Wednesday. Jason is a historian of the game. 
Like, right. Jason remembers things. I had no clue that those things happened. Like, I met Jason at Ernie and Bernie basketball camp at Fordham University back in, like, wow. four. And Jason has... Hey, listen, everybody went to the Ernie and Bernie camp because <laughs> I went there as but, well. But Jason has pictures. How did he get a camera much as to have <laughs> pictures? You understand what I'm saying? And he remembers everything. He's a true student of the game. And you know what? He has so much success in high school and in college. Um, and, it, and it all comes from him wanting to learn, wanting to be better, and didn't have the ego about it because he played behind people who were better than him. And then he played right, behind people right. who were not necessarily better than him. But he just stayed the course. He did his thing. And Jay, Jay's a man. He lived down the street from me. He, but he don't call me no more, but you know, and then he stayed busy. I don't know. Jason got like 19 jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen he's he's super busy. He's super motivated. And I love his, his energy. Is a baller too. Okay, okay. I'll definitely I'll definitely get into that tomorrow, man. Yeah, I'm, I'll be locked in. I'll be tuned in. Oh uh, man, listen, man, I appreciate you, man. I want to show you your piece, right? Real quick, because my boy, he, he does it on everything. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see that. Oh, nice. That's dope. Hey, okay. You know, we're we going to frame him up. You know what I'm saying? Got to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to finish Mike and put Drexel on Mike's. And you know what I'm saying? He got you, Marilyn, that block shot. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's probably for sure, my brother. one of three that I got for my whole career in Maryland. There you go, man. <laughs> my center, my center was the second leading block shot in the nation behind Shaq. Right, right. So we ship every send everything to Cedric. Send everything to Cedric. His brother, <laughs> his brother was the center in Maryland with Lynn Byers. Right, right. So, okay, okay. But I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate everything. I appreciate the love. listen, brother. Appreciate it was my pleasure. Um, you did it the hard way, man, and you did it. You earned you earned your stripes, right? For sure, for sure. And even when you came up short, you dusted yourself off, you got up, and you went back, you got your degree, and you solid now. Absolutely. And you give it back to the kids, man. So that's I salute you, brother. I just want to give you your flowers and say thank you for putting it down for all the times in New York City, man. Appreciate, I appreciate you, brother. It. Always New York. I appreciate everything, man. Thanks for having me on. Definitely salute my brother. My man. All right.